Let's talk about periodontal charting, kind of what it's there for, and how to calculate the different measurements from the probing measurements, how much pressure to apply. But we're also going to talk about clinical attachment loss. But then what do you do if there's inflammation and what do you do if there's gingival recession? So I'm going to walk you through the study guide that I have inside the course for you. And I'm also going to show you a video to really help explain it as well afterwards, where I kind of show you the probe on the diagram. So let me share my screen here and kind of show you and walk you through it. So basically what do you have to know about perio charting? And I had made a list here for you so it's very easy to study afterwards. So basically what is the point of perio charting? This is the only way for us to tell if the patient has gum disease. There's gingivitis and there's also perio. So gingivitis is reversible and that's kind of looking at the gums to see their health such as if the gums are bleeding, red, puffy, swollen. That is looking at gingivitis. But what if the patient is starting to lose bone support? What if their periodontal ligament is, start, is starting to become detached? So this is what periodontal disease is. And the only way to measure the bone loss, if there is any, and to really measure the health of the gums is doing the perio charting. Okay. So you can have gingivitis and still do the periodontal charting and you only have one to three millimeters. You can have that and gingivitis. You can also have probing depths where there could be eight millimeters. So you have periodontal disease and gingivitis. So if you need more clarification on gingivitis and perio, let me know, depending on where you are in your program, you might be just learning it now, or you might be a pro at it, but you're still kind of confused about pocket levels. Don't worry, we're going to talk about all of that. So again, it is a way to really measure periodontal disease. So what is the probing depth specifically? This is the distance from the gingival margin to the bottom of the pocket. And don't worry, I'm going to show you guys a diagram soon. So the gingival margin to the bottom of the pocket, this is where you insert your probe. And until you feel resistance, that's how you know the pocket is there and then you stop applying pressure. This takes practice. I remember when I was in dental hygiene school, I was working as a dental assistant at the time and I remembered asking dental hygienists in the, in the, in the office, can you explain to me what this pressure is? Like, how do I know I'm not probing too far? And they said to me, well, you just know. And I thought, well, that's a very silly answer, but it's true. I can't explain it now that I'm a dental hygienist myself and I've been a dental professional since 2005, but I still have the same answer for you. You just know, and it takes practice, but the good rule of thumb is don't apply too much pressure since you're still kind of learning and you're not really sure. Just apply a little bit of pressure. Don't apply too much because you can actually hurt the gums, but um, all in all, most patients are going to be one to three millimeters. If you're noticing you're getting eight, millim eight millimeter pockets for every patient, you're doing it wrong. Or if you notice you're getting one millimeter pockets for the whole mouth for every patient, you're doing it wrong too. So just apply gentle pressure. So this is inserting the probe into the sulcus or pocket around each tooth and to record the depth in millimeters. It's not centimeters, it's millimeters. You will take six measurements per tooth, three on the facial, three on the lingual. So it's typically starting from the most distal portion of the tooth. So distal, middle of the buckle, and then mesial, and then wrapping around the mesial of the lingual. Sorry, I had to think about that. The mesial of the lingual, the midpoint of the lingual, and then the distal of the lingual, depending on where you're starting but always start from the most distal point and then kind of wrap around the tooth that way. Um, as I mentioned, probing technique, apply gentle pressure, but it has to be consistent. You're walking the probe along the tooth, 20 to 25 grams. Honestly, honestly, I don't know what that is, but that's what they tell you in textbooks. This is what you have to know. 20 to 25 grams walking the probe. That is the key word here is walking, not stabbing. <laughs> walking. Now, what is the gingival margin level? This is a very common question. So this measures the position of the gingival margin relative to the cemento enamel junction or CEJ, we like to call it. If the gingival margin is at the CEJ, that is zero because that's where it should be. If it's above the CEJ, so inflammation, 
we measure the distance and record a positive number because it's above. Think above positive. If it's below the CEJ, that is gingival recession, record a negative number. Apical towards the apex is below. So um, quite often you might hear it being referred to as apical to the gingival margin. Think apical apex below, that is gingival recession. If, it, if it's coronal above, that is gingival inflammation. So again, if it's above the CEJ, also referred to as coronal, then it is a positive number. If it's below the CEJ, also referred to as apical, this is gingival recession. So here's some examples for you. So if the gingival margin is two millimeters above the CEJ, so inflammation, it's plus two. If it's three millimeters below, so coronal, gingival recession, it's negative three. Now what about the clinical attachment level, also known as clinical attachment loss? I'm actually gonna put this in here. So it could be referred to as loss or level, but it's still C-A-L, Cal. So this tells us the true extent. This is where we measure the probing depth, but also the amount of inflammation and or the amount of gingival recession for every tooth. This shows you the true extent of periodontal disease. So when adding the probing depth to the gingival margin level, so if our probing depth is four millimeters and our gingival margin level is plus two, so that's above, the clinical attachment level or called clinical attachment loss is six millimeters. I like to refer to it as level because it's not really a loss, but some textbooks refer to it as a loss, so that's why I put it in there. So again, you measure the probing depth first, that is at your like gingival margin level and then to your pocket. So let's say that's four millimeters. And then you have to measure if there's inflammation, measure from the um, CEJ up. Don't worry, I'm going to show you guys with a diagram shortly. And that is plus two, so then you have to add them together. So the clinical attachment level is six millimeters. Now, if the gingival margin is minus two, so now we're calculating recession minus two, then you want to subtract that from the probing depth to get a clinical attachment level of two. Because remember, the pocket was four, okay? So four minus two is two. Four plus two is six for inflammation. So how is every, everybody doing so far? Make sure to let me know. So then I kind of go through it again here, gingival margin level. Um, I give you some examples, so um, make note in your study guide. I'm going to show you these pictures in a second where I'm going to re-explain everything to you. And then also you'll notice in your study guide, clinical attachment loss. I'm going to put level here because it really does depend on the textbook you read. I forget which one I was referring to for this um, study guide here. But um, so, and then I explain it again, okay? And then calculating bone loss, this is just kind of something extra here where if, if you're told to calculate the bone loss, that is to look at the x-rays. And then just some kind of probing technique tips. This is just from your textbook here. If you have any questions, let me know. But basically, you want to walk that probe around six measurements per tooth. You always record the higher number. So for example, if I'm probing around and I'm, I'm probing and I need to record a measurement for the distal buckle of the tooth, if I'm getting numbers of say 1112, two is the higher number. So for the distal part, I'm going to put two. So always record the higher number um, and be consistent. Some practical tips, just in case you needed to be reminded, make sure to always fulcrum. This just helps to stabilize everything. Make sure your patient is in the proper position. As an example, you don't wanna be probing and the patient is sitting up, like that's gonna make it a lot harder for you, right? Okay, so let me show you guys kind of those images that I was talking about. Um, I'm actually gonna hide my face so that way you can see the images better. So you guys, look at this here. Now, I did have a little probe, but that's, I was gonna show you with the probe, but I think the line is good enough here. So when you're probing, you guys, so can you see my mouse? When you're probing, you need to probe in here. So you need to probe the pocket 
the pocket. The sulcus is here, just kind of along underneath. So you need to probe this, okay? So let's say um, you're probing and the, the probe number is two, let's just say it's three, okay? Because I see some redness here. The gums probably aren't the healthiest. It could even be four, but I'm just going to say three to pick a number. So you're probing, okay? But then you also have to measure, see where there's this yellowy area? This kind of shows you where that is starting, okay? If you pay attention to this tooth here, it's nice and healthy. The gum is healthy. So your gingival margin should be here because that's where it is on this tooth, right? And another way to kind of show it is this yellow area. This should be covered by the gums. So I'm just going to put this here, like just to kind of help you guys kind of see it a little bit better. So here's an example. If the, if the gingival margin is two millimeters coronal, um, sorry, coronal, um, to the CEJ, then the gingival margin level is plus two. If the gingival margin is three millimeters apical gingival recession, then it's plus three. Okay. So, I'm going to give you an example here shortly. So if the probing depth, so I should have said four, but if the probing depth is four millimeters and the gingival margin level is negative two, we just have to add those together, you guys. So then the answer is going to be plus two. So four minus two is two, right? Four minus two is two. So I kind of said it twice here. If the probing depth is five millimeters and the, and the gingival margin level is plus three, then you are going to add those together to make it eight, okay? And I'm sorry, I don't know why I have this here twice. That was just a little typo. There we go. So see how this is gingival inflammation here, you guys? Right here. So this is where the gum should be, but it's quite puffy. So first you do still have to probe to kind of calculate the, the probing depth, but more realistically, if the gum is inflamed like this, it's probably over the entire tooth. So then you'll be probing in here, trying to figure out like, okay, where's that pocket? But as, as you can imagine, you won't be able to see. Here, I'll put my face up a bit. That might be easier to help, um, like e easier to help you see and kind of help me show you. So you're probing here, like look at the mouse and look at my finger. You're probing here, but then you're kind of doing it blindly, right? So let's say the probing depth is four and you're, um, it's quite inflamed. So the gingival margin is plus three. So you're measuring from the top of the inflammation to where the gum should be. So let's just say from here, oh, sorry, you can't see that because my face is in the way. So let's say here, I'll actually draw another line. Let's say this is the top of the inflammation that looks like the top to me. This is where the gum line should be. So you measure from the top to the bottom and let's just say that that's plus three, okay? So then the clinical attachment level is going to be eight millimeters, okay? So does that help a little bit? And then it'd be the same if let's say you were measuring um, your probing and then you're measuring the depth of recession. So how is that measured? I'm just gonna take the line again from here to here. So top to bottom, okay? So does that help to explain things a little bit better? So let's say the pocket, I'm gonna move my face again actually, sorry guys. So <laughs> let's say the pocket you're measuring, see, see my mouse here, there you go. You're measuring the pocket, let's say it's four millimeters. And then you are measuring from the gingival recession to the top to the bottom. Let's just say that that's, that's two, so you would minus it. So four minus two, is going to be two, okay? But then remember how if you're measuring inflammation, you have to add those together. So let's just take that line again. Let's just say, oh, sorry, let's do, I'm just positioning this forward there. So we're taking the line again from the top to the bottom is going to be plus three right down here. So let's just say, and in this example, we are using the probing depth is 
going to be five. So you're probing, but you're kind of doing it blindly, but that's kind of the number that you have determined. And then from the top to the bottom of the inflammation is plus three, we said. So then you add those together because it's plus, and then it's, it's going to be eight for the clinical attachment level, okay? So you guys, does that help to explain things? I'll show you guys the study guide again. It's all right here for you. I do constantly add to it depending on everybody's questions. So keep referring back. If you have any questions, let me know. You can comment right inside the course as well or send me an email anytime. I am here to help you and let me know if you need any further clarification on probing, probing depths, probing charting. It's all something that does take practice. I promise you will get it and it will be okay. I promise. But let me know if you need anything. Thank you guys.